Hello and welcome to This Is A Man's World. Today's video is all about how to get a job in engineering with little or no experience. Cue that intro. So if you are just leaving school or you have graduated from university and you're looking for an engineering job, you might be thinking, how on earth do I find my first job? Well, this is a question that I get asked tons of times. In fact, this week I took part in, I'm an engineer, get me out of here. Um, and I was in touch with lots of school children up and down the country. And the most common question was, how do you get into engineering? Now, if you are a graduate or if you are a school leaver, you might need a little bit of help or advice in this area. Let's get right into it and I will tell you exactly how I got my job and my top tips for getting your first engineering job. Before we jump into my advice, um, I want to discuss some of the things that people say to me when talk about getting a career in engineering especially graduates. They say there's a lot of competition out there. Um, how do I get onto a construction site in particular when I don't have any experience in the field? So many people are applying for one job. How do I get that job? And secondly, I've been applying for X amount of time and I'm just not having any luck. Uh, the one thing I'm going to say, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, is engineering is hard no matter what field you go into. As a job it is challenging. The first problem you need to start with is how to get a job, funnily enough. Right, okay, now I've discussed uh, all the common barriers and complaints and all the things people say to me about why and how they can't get a job. So let's try and solve it. Now some of you may or may not know that I did not do a civil engineering degree and then walk straight into an engineering job. My route was a little unconventional, uh, there's a video below which tells you exactly how I got in. In short, I entered through the world of geotechnical engineering and then worked my way with experience and a little bit of retraining into construction engineering. And it just shows that you don't have to take one route to get into engineering and you need to think outside the box and apply this when you are looking for a job. Now I think we can break this down into two routes into engineering. Firstly, uh, to go to school and then college and then get an apprenticeship. In the UK at the moment there are tons of apprenticeships going especially in construction and engineering and I know in other fields of engineering too. This is an awesome way to get into the industry. I have had apprentices working for me, I've worked along apprentices, and I've also worked along graduates. Both are equally great routes into a career in engineering. That's important to know. Um, I think a lot of people feel pressured to go to university and have a civil engineering degree. You don't need one, there are other routes in, don't panic. You need to figure out what is best for you. Do you want to go and do a degree? Um, or do you want to learn on the job and take a little bit longer? Or do you want to learn on the job? It might take a little bit longer, but after I'd say three to five years, you'd have all this wealth of experience that you've built up and you're, you're probably gonna land straight into a job because most apprenticeships lead into a job, whereas once you've done a degree at the end of three years, a lot of people come to me and they say, how do I get a job? I've been studying for three years, I don't have any experience on a construction site. I'm not, it's not to say that you're not gonna get a job on a construction site, it's just you need to weigh up uh, apprenticeship and the value of experience on site versus doing, I suppose, a small three year degree and then getting on a graduate scheme. All right, they're the two routes into the industry. There is a third route, so the third route in construction is if you work on the tools, if you are a bricklayer, a plumber. I've seen people move from that position into management um, and into engineering through retraining. They get with companies and they explain that they want to become an engineer. Then that company will support them with a job, uh, training on the job, and also sending them to university. So that's like the third route. So there really is no excuse when people say, I can't get into engineering, you know, I'm, I've never been to university or I didn't do well at school. There is always a route in. Right, so I'm gonna grab my red book now because in here are some of the common questions that I get asked regarding how to become an engineer. So, um, comments, comments, comments. Work experience. 
Without any experience on a construction site, I understand how daunting that may be when applying for jobs and you may think that automatically an employer is just not going to be interested in you. That's not the case, but one bit of advice that I would have is go and get experience. And I know getting experience can be hard, but I did it. Um, you know, I wrote to companies, I emailed people and I said, can I come and do uh, summer work experience with you? I did this after graduating, but in hindsight, I would try and do it before graduating. Or even if you're at school, get on work experience and get onto a construction site. Even if it's two weeks, you understand how a site works, you understand daily routines. These are all things that you can discuss in an interview with a construction company or in any engineering field. Uh, work experience is available out there and when people come up with excuses such as, you know, I couldn't get on work experience, it's really hard to believe that because at the end of the day, you're working for free for a company. Now, in construction, I do understand that there are certain barriers you've got to overcome before you can even start work experience, such as you do need um, qualifications, basic site qualifications to, to be able to be on site, if that makes sense. But I do believe, after chatting with some people, you can still get onto a construction site doing work experience without these qualifications. You just need to apply for a company who know what they're doing and have everything set in place to take on someone under the age of 18, say, if that applies to you. So that brings me nicely to my second point, which is start before everyone else. Um, if you're in school, ask around, ask if your parents know anyone in the field of engineering that you want to work in and start having discussions with them. You know, they might know someone who is looking um, for to someone to take on as an apprentice or for work experience. But start before you finish your studies, if that makes sense. And the same when you're in a degree, I know some degrees offer a year out in work placement, that's great. Um, and that's something you can discuss when you go to uh, apply for a job. But if you've got other jobs that you've done a week here or a week there, that's just gonna look even better for you. Plus, when you finish your degree, everyone in your year and everyone across the country is then gonna start flooding companies with CVs and emails about jobs. But if you've started six months before you graduate or even a year before you graduate, you've started a conversation and you're probably gonna be on that company's radar. Now, this is a big one. Everyone, including myself, um, I just looked at large companies. So I was like, where are the big projects going on in the UK? I wanna be on this motorway, I wanna be on this bridge job, and that's great. But large companies, they have huge HR departments and emails get lost and it's really hard to find the right contacts. So I would suggest looking at smaller companies, phone around local firms with smaller amounts of employees and see what projects they've got going on and just have a conversation, see if they're employing anyone in the future. Would they be interested in taking on a graduate or apprentice? So start small before you work up for those big companies. If you're sending out CVs and you're not getting any responses, Maybe considering reworking your CV. Um, so many times I have just rushed around, sent my CV out, and then had no responses for jobs. And it's only when I've actually gone and looked back at my CV, I realized A, it wasn't up to date, and B, it was pretty shoddy. Uh, so if need be, get someone to look at your CV, but this could be a real stumbling block for you. You might be thinking you're sending out your best work, but in fact, someone might be looking at it and going, oh, well, this is a bit shoddy, and that even stops you getting an interview. So ensure your CV is up to scratch. Think outside the box. So you might want a particular job in engineering or in the field of construction, and that job might not be available for you at this point in time. So I wouldn't just sit around for six months until the right job comes up. Um, I would get into the industry any way you can. So if you, want to do labouring on a building site during the summer to earn some extra money, do that because once you're in with a firm, A, you're getting work experience. Yes, you might be on a shovel and you've got an engineering degree, but who cares? As soon as you mention that to the people you're working with, they're going to be like, oh, hold on a minute, this guy's got experience, we like him, or girl, um, and then you get moved to the job that you want to do. So think outside the box. If you can't automatically get a job in the area that you want to, why not go for something just a little bit different? different um, or something that will get you through the door and nine times out of ten that's then going to take you to where you're going to be. I started out materials testing on a landfill and worked alongside an engineer 
and then that took me into engineering once that person suggested and I shadowed them and that's really how my career took off. So think outside the box. And finally, do some research. Ah, lazy people, you're never gonna get a job in engineering. In the UK construction industry, if you want to get on a job, like I said, and you don't want work experience, but you actually want a job, uh, you need one thing in particular at the moment and that is called a CSCS card so nobody for health and safety reasons is allowed to step onto a construction site unless they have one of these yes that's me it's a horrific picture um, it was taken after a Christmas night out so please don't judge the mugshot uh, go and get one of these it's a touchscreen test, much like your driving test, but you absolutely need one of these. If you work in another country or you want to get a job in another country, I'm sure there's a similar, I say, I'm going to say it's a qualification, it's not really, that you're going to need. So research it and go and get one because the last thing you want is someone to say, yes, we'll take you on, um, we have this job, but do you have this? And you turn around and say, no, you just look unprepared. So be prepared. Another one um, that actually I didn't know that I needed when I was working uh, building petrols, petrols, petrol stations was this like specialist fuel safety card. Again, what an epic picture. Um, and that one, the company that I work for actually paid for me to do this. But if you've gone ahead and got your own, I think this one is like 40 pounds to do the test. It's just going to put you ahead of someone else that hasn't got that card. Alrighty Roo, I hope this video has been informative and more importantly helpful for you guys. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to leave you with is don't give up. Just keep going. Eventually someone's going to let you in the door, you're going to get the right job and then your career is going to take off. Nothing is given to you for free. You have to graft and that is it. Get out there, find the jobs, work really hard and please stop with the excuses it was not easy for me and throwing in yes I'm going to throw in the, the feminist bit that I was also a woman and there are zero women on construction sites and I still did it there is no excuse for you out there if you really want an engineering job and you apply the majority of things that we've talked about in this video then I am 100% certain that you're going to get a job to put on top of that the UK industry at the moment is screaming for engineers so there are, like I say, a ton of apprenticeships and graduate schemes. That was another one I didn't mention. Huge amount of graduate schemes that you can get onto within um, the construction industry. So many different types of engineering you can get into. So please, please, please just keep going. Try really hard and apply some of the things we talked about today. And hopefully it'll all work out for you. Okay, that's enough for today. 